Now, Drudge all day has had the headline up as his top link. Pillows for Hillary. Again, everywhere that Hillary goes, every speech she gives, she needs to be literally propped up by pillows. If you saw the video yesterday, her visit to Joe Biden's house, literally struggling to even walk up the drive, holding on to railings, holding on to the table. This is a major issue. It's a major cover up. The mainstream media is panicking about Hillary's health. And of course, for the past couple of weeks, they've relied on that old adage of this is just a conspiracy theory. Daily Beast, which of course is a Clinton mouthpiece, came out and attacked me, attacked Mike Cernovich, said, oh, you don't have any experts. You don't have any health professionals, even though in my original video, which has now got 3 million views, I named all the neurologists, all the doctors, all the health experts that circulated these suspicions, these concerns in the first place. But they said, no, Chris Hayes of MSNBC said, no, this is just a nutty conspiracy theory. Well, now we've got Dr. Drew, who is known as America's most trusted physician, again, board certified medicine specialist, an active physician, coming out and saying that he's gravely concerned about Hillary's health, coming out and saying that she has brain damage, that the drugs that she's being given are causing all these, quote, weird side effects. So again, that's not me saying it. That's not conspiracy theorists on the dark corners of the internet saying it. That's America's most trusted physician to add to the names of all the other health experts who have come out and said the same thing. This is not a conspiracy theory. We have noted professionals all saying the same thing, that there are major problems with Hillary's health and the videos, the photos only continue to confirm that. So another individual who's been hot on the trail of this big controversy over the last few weeks is Mike Cernovich, author, writer, and social media pariah to the left. The book is Guerrilla Mindset. I have it right here. Mike, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on. So Mike, again, the media were obsessed with, you know, John McCain's health back in 2008. They forced him into releasing his medical records. This time around, they're attacking anyone who asks the same questions about Hillary, calling them conspiracy theorists. Why is being concerned about a presidential candidate's ill health only a baseless conspiracy theory when they're a Democrat? Explain that to me. One of the people even sent me in a link where they were asking for Mitt Romney's health records too, including his psych psychiatric records. So it not only did the liberal media go after John McCain's records, they also went after Mitt Romney's records. Now, why are they doing this? Well, the DNC leaks proved it. It proved what you and I and others have said for years, people like Alex Jones, other pioneers have said for decades, which is the media takes its marching orders from the Democratic National Co Committee and DNC leaks prove that. I mean, literally, Daily Beast, they attacked me, they attacked you on the same day. They attacked you on a different issue, but this is a company that is owned by an organization whose board of directors includes Chelsea Clinton. It's literally a Clinton mouthpiece. And yet today, for example, they have the temerity to come out and say, oh, Donald Trump is hiring somebody who, you know, sits on, the, on this media organization that's been a, a mouthpiece for Trump since the beginning, when they're literally the same thing for Hillary Clinton. Now, Chris Matthews came out, I think it was last night, he questioned Hillary's health. The left went absolutely nuts. They tried to put him back in his box merely for raising the issue. We've got, you know, US News and World Report, CNN saying, oh, Hillary's physician a year ago told us that Hillary was completely fine. So, like, that's an impartial, independent source. And yet we've got all this new evidence that she's got major health problems. We've got Dr. Drew coming out today saying that he's gravely concerned about it. Again, hardly a right-wing extremist, Dr. Drew. Now, you started the trend last night on Twitter. Hillary Stools, tell us about that. Yeah, big picture is we have the media shook because we create news cycles. If we want something to be news, the media, they try to ignore it. They can't ignore it anymore. And that's why they're trying to dismiss us as conspiracy, conspiracy theorists. 
because they won't debate us. I heard Alex Jones even saying earlier in the segment, I'm offering these people $20,000 to come onto my show for two hours, $10,000 an hour. Man, I, you know, I do okay in life. I wish I was getting $10,000 $10, an hour to come on somebody's show. And they won't debate us because they know that the truth is on our side. So what we did with Hillary Stools was a, a reader pointed out to me, um, she said, I went to this rally and I noticed that Hillary was always leaning back on this, school, uh, this stool and she sent me pictures. And then suddenly I was like, holy shit. And I tweeted it out. People said, yeah, everywhere she goes now, there's a stool that she has to lean on, a leaning stool. So we held a live Periscope session. 15,000 people showed up and we came up with the hashtag Hillary Stools, which ended up being the number one trending hashtag on Twitter before the night was over. Again, a testament to the power of just you as an independent reporter on this, taking that issue, turning it into a viral hashtag within a matter of minutes. And the other aspect of that, of course, which proves your point is this weird handler, this black guy who initially was her medical assistant, then the media claimed he was a secret service agent. We drew attention to that, to the fact that he was, you know, basically hypnotizing her on stage when she had these freak outs after being confronted. He seems to have mysteriously disappeared, correct? Yeah, and the stools have disappeared too. And the, the PSYOPs campaign, I'm very overt about what I do. I'm running a PSYOPs campaign. We're making it now so Hillary can't have her little precious stool to lean on. She's not traveling with her hypnotist. That is going to lead to fatigue. So we can expect more unforced errors from Hillary. Now, the, the mainstream media's freak out to this is evidence that we're on to something. They all know that Hillary's sick because they travel with her. They're on the airplanes with her. They're with her every day. That's why they're freaking out. That's why, again, the Daily Beast, they did a hit job on you. They did a hit job on me to try to get me banned from TV, bringing up out of context tweets from five years ago. That's how desperate they are. That's all they can do. They can't address our arguments, so they try to discredit us. But it doesn't matter. We're winning. We're getting our information out. It truly is an information war. And finally, for the first time in a very long time, people like us are winning. No, I'm, I mean, you're trailblazing on this issue, and that's that's very apparent. What I've been told privately is that, you know, we had people out there ready today to get the footage from relatively close up of her getting out of the vehicle, because, of, of course, we were told by a Secret Service source that they've spent around half a million dollars on these three SUVs to lower the floor to provide some kind of disabled access. So we were going to get pretty close, get some photos, get some videos of that today. They changed the route in which Hillary arrived to whatever location she's at today to avoid media attention. So as he said, with the stool, they've taken away the stool, the weird handler who had the injection syringe, who calmed her on stage, he's disappeared. So while we have the Clinton campaign, and in fact, they came out yesterday to the Washington Post and said, this is a debunked conspiracy theory. How dare Donald Trump glom onto this? This is right wing conspiracy theory. Well, if it's a conspiracy theory, why are you changing your behavior? Why have you removed the stool? Why have you removed the handler? They're obviously really sensitive to this, Mike, which suggests that there is some kind of cover-up going on. Do you think that they'll be forced at some point to release some kind of medical record to try and dismiss this whole thing? Right now, they're trying to figure out a way to spin it, and I think they'll try to make a sympathy play and they'll say, oh, Hillary did have some kind of health problems, and now these people are right-wing bullies. Can you believe? So what we'll do is we'll go from conspiracy theorists to they'll call us bullies next and try to make her, like the left always does, appear like a victim. However, that has perils and pitfalls, because as I'm fond of saying, pity doesn't get you votes and pity doesn't get you, you know, laid either. So just because people feel sorry for you and feel like you're being bullied, that doesn't mean that they're actually going to vote for us. So again, the media is so shook by this because they know that we're right. They're covering things up. A good example of that was, remember the Hillary, you know, the, the seizure thing? Well, an AP journalist, journalist said, oh, I was there and I didn't think anything was unusual. But I think it was either you or Stefan Molyneux posted the image of as it happened that that same so-called journalist was like this. What? She completely freaked <laughs> out, right? 
Completely, yeah. She came out and said, oh, it was nothing out of the ordinary that Hillary had this seizure that went on for like a minute. And then the, the mainstream media, MSNBC, came out and said, oh, I slowed down the footage. I edited the footage to make it appear worse than it was. They said this as they personally sped up the footage to try and get it over as quickly as possible because this weird bobblehead thing that she was doing went on forever. And as he said, this AP journalist came out, who was, you know, obviously pro-Clinton, said, oh, there was nothing abnormal about this exchange whatsoever. Look at her face. Tell me that that's not abnormal. Absolutely bizarre. But now we've got Dr. Drew coming out today. Again, they've tried to pin this on right-wing extremist conspiracy theorists. We've got Dr. Drew, America's most trusted physician. He said that he's analyzed the records that have already been released on Hillary Clinton. And even what they've released is very suspicious because she's getting treatment straight out of the 1950s, the 1960s. He said that he's gravely concerned about it because the very side effects that we've seen in all this video footage and in these photos, the weird seizures, the dizziness, the confusion, they're side effects of the medication that's inaccurately being prescribed to her by her doctors. So, you know, they can't, they can no longer just dismiss this by claiming it's, it's Paul Joseph Watson, Mike Cernovich, when we've got more and more prominent voices coming out. And I guess you've also been contacted, Mike, by health experts, by neurologists like I have, who are saying the same thing, correct? Yes, and I've also been contacted by Secret Service, Secret Service agents, as you have, and I've heard similar things that it is an open secret among the Secret Service agents that Hillary could could fall down any time. And that's why if you look at the other picture of Hillary being held up by a Secret Service agent, there's another one depicted where he's sort of leaning over. They've actually been trained and undergone drills about Hillary's health now because they know that she could fall down or collapse at any time. And that was the, the interesting thing was, I didn't know that you were on the, yeah, see exactly. And you can see that the one guy's holding her up and the other guy has his hands outreached. It also appears in his left hand he might be holding something. I don't know if he has some kind of pen, um, the, the tan jacket in his left hand, or which would be on the, the far, far right of us. He might even be holding something right there in his hand. We can't tell, though, for sure. And it and looks then, like... On, on, Mike, on the other photos of this, you see, because people look at this and they say, oh, she must be on a tiny platform that's rickety and small. You see the zoomed out photos, and it's this huge, wide platform it's not even very tall. She wouldn't fall off it if she was had adequate balance, right? Right. That's how bad her balance is. And again, that's why she could fall at any time. That's why that stool is with her all the time now. Because, well, it isn't now because of us, thankfully. She knows any time she can lean up against it and we got it. We got her. Like, it's checkmated. Her health is a major issue. She could collapse at any moment. The media has always known it, and they've covered it up, but they can't cover it up anymore. And you've got these three presidential debates coming up next month with Trump. Again, is she going to have this stool on standby? She's going to be have to be walking around. This is the whole point of a debate. You have to project. You have to case your territory. It's it's like a dominant turf war kind of thing. Uh, merely with your, you know, your body language in these debates, she's going to be up there for a couple of hours a time with Trump at least, facing all these questions, which we know stresses her out. Do you foresee some kind of weird seizure or collapse in these high-pressure situations that are coming up for Hillary Clinton? It was initially leaked to me by her own people that Hillary was going to push to have the debate sitting down, actually. So we, we exposed that right away. Hillary doesn't want to do the standing debate. So what I predict is that she is going to put up a bunch of barriers to try to make debates not even happen because she wants them sitting down. As you said, she can't stand up for two hours. She doesn't have the um, health to stand up for two hours. She wants to have the debate sitting. So what I predict will happen is there's going to be a push to have the debate sitting. And if Trump won't do him sitting, which he absolutely should not do, then she's going to try to find a way to weasel out of the debates. Amazing. Now, just in the final couple of minutes, Mike, tell people how they can find you on Twitter. Tell them about your website and where they can get the book. Sure. My Twitter is my last name, which is C-E-R-N-O-V-I-C-H. 
and that sends you to my books, my website. Dangerplays.com is my website, and I cover a lot of issues about life primarily. And I always try to make it positive. You know, you never want to give in to the enemy and to feel hopelessness and to feel despair. We always keep it positive. I also have a podcast on iTunes. My books are over on Amazon and Audible. So if you find my Twitter or you get a, or you go to dangerplay.com, that'll launch you to everything else I have going on. Okay, that's dangerandplay.com, and the book is Gorilla Mindset, which I got about a month ago and read it. I urge everybody to get that book. Mike Cernovich, we'll have you back on as this develops. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for your work, Paul. Kill it. There goes Mike Cernovich again. Follow him on Twitter. The website is dangerandplay.com. Analyzing, tracking this Hillary's health scandal. Again, Drudge Report had the headline up earlier today. She's basically propped up by pillows at every speech she gives. We had a video yesterday where she visited, I think it was Joe Biden's childhood home. She literally needs a Zimmer frame at this point. I mean, not to be rude about it, but she looks like an 85-year-old granny who has problems getting from A to B, if A to B are 10 yards apart, which is exactly what the Secret Service agents have said privately what the NYPD officers, officers have said who work security at her events. She gives a 15-minute speech. She's literally collapsing. They have to help her back into the vehicle. This is obviously a major problem, given that she's about to take on if she wins the most stressful job in the world. And if it was all an open book, and that these problems were known and we could discuss them and debate them, then fair enough. But it's a cover-up. They said, oh, her physician said a year ago she was fine, and we're supposed to swallow that and accept it and not question it. Every single leftist mainstream media outlet from CNN to The Washington Post to MSNBC has been in full lockstep cover-up mode, trying to dismiss these questions as conspiracy theories, even as more and more prominent voices come out and voice them.